Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Joanna Rogers, and I have been working with Dr. Misra for um, almost a year now with this project. And it is the local and regional scale variations of the rainy season over Central America. Um, I probably put too many pictures on here, so it's going to be kind of fast, but I apologize. Um, the objective here. The onset demise dates of the rainy season of Central America will be evaluated using methods developed by Dr. Misra and yet um, using NASA's iMERGE rainfall data. And these methods will then be applied in both a regional scale and a local scale. This region includes Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama. Um, and you can see here in this topographic map that it has a pretty complex um, geography. It has um, lots of mountains and um, the proximity to two different ocean basins makes it a really interesting area. Central America can be best described using two seasons rather than the traditional four. Um, it's best described as having a wet season and then a dry season. The timing length and severity of the wet season is vital to the economy of Central America. Um, they rely a lot on agriculture and tourism and hydropower. And these are greatly impacted by the variations in the rainy season. Um, you can see here, this is agriculture in Guatemala. These are coffee. This is a coffee plantation in Costa Rica. This is the Tikal uh, Mayan city in Guatemala. This is a big tourist place. And again, this is another tourist place. This is the Monteverde Cloud Forest in Guatemala. The data being um, used is the iMERGE rainfall data set, and it's from the Global Precipitation Measurement Mission. This mission was developed jointly by NASA and JAXA, and it was launched in 2014 and has data from the year 2000 to the present. Um, this research is using the 12 hour late run data set at 0.1 degree grid spacing. The onset demise dates of the rainy season are defined as the first and the last days of the year when the rainfall rain rate exceeds and falls below the climatological annual mean rainfall rate. It's a lot of words. Um, It'll make sense here in a minute. Mathematically, the climatology is, um, is the annual mean of the area average rainfall for M years. So it's, it's, it's just the mean rainfall, it's the climatology. Um, so the cumulative anomaly is the, the difference of the day's rain. So this is just a day's rain from the climatology. And then you sum up all of these anomalies. Um, this is best displayed graphically. So you can see here, the blue line is the area average rainfall in millimeters. The green line is the cumulative anomaly. And then the onset demise dates are indicated by the green bar and the red bar respectively. So the onset date is the minimum of the cumulative anomaly and the demise date is the maximum. And the rainy season lies between these two. Um, so this is Belize in 2022. I just kind of picked a random one. Further, a perturbation method of plus or minus three days is applied. This assesses the sensitivity of the onset and demise dates to synoptic events, and it also mimics the uncertainty in the observations. So going on to the results now, for the regional scale, so these are based off of the country boundaries, um, we did a correlation table between the onset date, demise date, length of season, and the seasonal rain. The bold values are significant at the 95th percentile. Um, but what's kind of important here is that using the onset and demise, it gives us a good idea of the season length. So all of these are significant. And then once you kind of have an idea of season length, um, the length is usually very correlated with the season rain. Um, so this definition of onset and demise kind of gives a pretty good outlook to the season um, based on this correlation table. Um, we wanted to see if there were influence based on El Nino. So we did correlations based off of the Nino, uh, Nino 3.4 SST um, for the different months leading into onset and demise. Um, but you can see here that the correlations are not very um, agreed and there's not a lot of significance based on this regional scale. And this is also true for the Atlantic warm pool data that we used and the Eastern Pacific warm pool data. So on the regional scale, there's not a lot of significance, um, but I'm gonna come back to that when we get to the local scale. 
on the regional scale, um, this is a box and whisker plot. So this is after applying a thousand iterations using the perturbation method that we used, we made box and whisker plots. And you can see um, just following the median of the box and whiskers, there is um, clear season, seasonal variations in all the years in all these regions. Um, further, um, this is also seen looking at the demise dates. It also has all the same variations in the cycles. This is the length of season. And of course, it also will follow the same by definition. And then the season rain, it still has the same kind of a cycle going on. But what also is interesting here is that the slope of the season rain is decreasing for the 22 years of data that we use. Um, so that's something interesting that we might look further into. Moving on to the local scale, this is a map of the average season rain or, or onset, sorry, the onset for the years 2001 to 2022. So looking down here in like the Panama region, it has, it tends to have an earlier onset compared to like Nicaragua. And it also has a later demise state, which then leads to having a longer season and typically more rainfall. Um, we do have this, this anomalous patch here that always has a lot of rainfall. So it kind of skewed the map a little bit. I might have to clean it up later, but um, you can still see it does have more rainfall. We also did correlation maps here. So this is a correlation map between season onset and season length. Um, the white dots are significant at the 99th percentile and the black dots are significant at the 95th percentile. Um, so there is a ton of very significant correlations in agreement. Um, so finding the onset can really tell you a lot about the season length and also the season rain. There's a little bit less agreement, but still um, a lot of significance. We also did correlation maps for the Nino and the um, warm pool data. So whenever I was going over the um, regional scale, there wasn't a lot of correlations, a lot of significance, but it, at the local scale, you can see there is a region where there is correlations. And that region is still there when looking at the season rain using the same index. This is for the Atlantic warm pool area. So the season length, of the Central America rainy season and the warm pool has this region, which is kind of an interesting region. It kind of follows the mountains a little bit. Um, and this one's really scattered. This is the season rain with the Atlantic warm pool area. Um, so it, it's interesting that the length is correlated in this way, but the rain is correlated in this way. I'm not sure why it would be scattered like that. Um, this is the season onset with the Atlantic pool warm pool onset. Um, so general agreement and strong correlations for the center. Moving on to the East Pacific warm pool, um, it has a very strange divide. So you have all these positive correlations up here and then negative correlations down here. Um, again, just kind of showing the scattered nature of the correlations. but there is general agreement when looking at the season rain with the East Pacific warm pool demise. Um, overall, we looked at a lot of variables here. Um, and so we're gonna have to draw conclusions in order to better understand the seasonality and variability of the Central America rainy season, and hopefully provide a more complete picture of the spatial distribution of the rainy season and how each of these variables influence and then we hope to use these correlations to provide a seasonal outlook prediction. The next steps are gonna to be to complete the literature review and write. Um, and we also hope to perform tests in order to quantify how the results may lead to a better season predictions. And we um, hope to further examine the implications of the Atlantic warm pool, East Pacific warm pool, El Nino, the ITZZ, topography and the midsummer drought on the rainy season. Um, I kind of went through that really fast, um, but any questions or comments?